Hi, and welcome to the Long Range Shooting and Custom Rifle Building Podcast presented by Wolf Precision Incorporated, where we learn about and share long range shooting and custom rifle building. I am your host, Jamie Dotson, and welcome to the show. Hi, and welcome to episode 143 of Wolf Precision's Long Range Shooting and Custom Rifle Building Podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Dotson. And in this one, we're sort of calling God, Guns, and Faith. A very special thanks, a very big day for us as a business. The last two days have just been absolutely incredible. And I want to share with everybody our story as a business and where we've gone, where we've came from, and you know just what we've accomplished over the last 10 years and share with you just how much everything that has been done has been done with people and customers and friends and those that have supported our business and believed in our projects. And just it's, I sat back today and just absolutely amazement on where we're at and all the blessings that we've been given and, and just how we just can't take them for granted. So this is a very special podcast for me because I want to share with you a little bit about our story, what we've accomplished and, and just how it's changed our lives for the good and where we're going from here and the blessings that we've received. So this ought to be a good one. I hope you stick around for it. Without further ado, here we go. I do want to say a quick thanks to our sponsors. Of course, they've helped make this podcast possible. I want to thank Trigger Tech. They're a maker of fine rifle triggers. They make it for lots of different makes and models, including all of our custom rifles, which you can purchase as a kit and install your own trigger, which we find is pretty cool. They have everything from the diamond right down to the primary, which is still a world-class trigger for less than $150. So if you want to upgrade your rival and you want to do it with a trigger, stop over to TriggerTech.com. That's TriggerTech.com. We also like to thank MDT, maker of fine rifle chassis. Everything from the HNT26 to a new wooden stock or chassis coming out, along with all the great ACC Elite, Jay Allen, the ACC Original, the Oryx, unsung hero of just a sub $500 chassis that kicks butt. So one of the things you can do if you have a factory or custom rifle is to get a chassis that fits you well or stock that fits you well. And if you want to upgrade, MDT is a great choice to look at. So you can stop over and see all they have to offer today at mdttac.com, mdttac.com. So some really exciting news for us here, and I just want to share it on the podcast and with everyone out there listening that we closed on our new facility yesterday at 1.30 in the afternoon, and it's a 9,000-square-foot facility. We're so excited. We're going to have seven really awesome rooms for customers to come and stay, like an Airbnb, I guess you would say, for all the things that we teach and do, but a really nice group area that you know students can hang out before and after class, and new armory, of course. Uh, we're going to be offering Cerakote, something that we've done in the past. We'll be doing ammunition manufacturing for our custom rifles, trying to support our customers that don't want to reload, as well as teaching the classes in reloading as well. And then for me, the biggest and most exciting thing is a uh, new lathe and mill that we should have on property and and installed and manufacturing just world-class products that we make and with using world-class equipment. How blessed we've been with all the people involved in all of these processes and just to make it happen. So if I can go back and just share with you a couple of things about our business and where we came from and, and driving to work today, it's, it's Friday, it's late. Uh, we had a lot to do yet today to tidy up a bunch of stuff with the new building and got finished up and I really felt you know driven to drive here. Uh, it's about a 35 minute drive from our home to come into our old location where we're still at. And just, you know, reminisce a little bit about where we've came from and how far we've come and just all the people who have helped make us and stretch us and grow us and the faith that you have to have that good things happen to good people and that not all bad things are bad, you know, that, that things happen and sometimes in a good way to make you stretch and get you outside your comfort zone. So to go back a little bit with my history and business, if I would have asked myself 30 years ago that I was going to be a business owner, my answer would have been I was going to be a pilot. I did a fair amount of time in aviation, in the military, police. I went into law enforcement, and I loved it, you know, helping people. For me, 
Um, maybe it was the the military thing that that just that dress right dress and being able to be there when people are in their time of need and then though you know you still had all the other things in today's you know law enforcement has to deal with this just crazy you know bad things right but every once in a while you get that call that you go and make a difference in somebody's life you know you change it you save them you bring them back from a horrible place that they're in and you know you're that hand like we were we're watching a video of a female officer rushing to a 911 call and with a choking toddler and flipping the toddler over, knowing exactly what to do and saving the toddler's life. You know, that's the moments that most police officers live for. It's not chasing down bad guys and holding people at gunpoint and all the things that that the stuff, stuff happens. You know, I mean, it's, it's just part of the job. But that like I remember uh, one of the guys that I used to work with saved a child from choking on a balloon and you you wouldn't think that this makes a difference but children actually die from when they blow a balloon up and they blow the air out they inhale and they suck the balloon in and you know die from asphyxiation and one of our officers didn't give up you know and the, the child was in absolute peril and he saved that child's life and as much as the guy was sort of a hard ass but that's that was him and that was what he was called to do and it was amazing right to to meet all these people so that's where i came from and i loved shooting as a kid i wish i knew that you know when i went in the military that sniper school wasn't that far away because i'd have probably pursued that i just love shooting i love the magic of putting a bullet way down range and, and magically hitting what what you were trying to hit it's it, to me it takes me back to being eight years old and 12 years old with a 22 long rifle and open sights, you know, shooting stuff at a hundred yards, right? It's magical. And it's still in my blood. Like it just gets, gets my blood boiling. But, you know, where we come from here and where our business came from and the things that we've accomplished, you know, just want to reminisce a little bit, not braggingly, not, not selling. This isn't a sales pitch. This is just me standing here late in the evening, the day after closing, on a dream come true of opening up a 9,000 square foot facility for manufacturing from a kid that at 19 years old lived in a 19 foot RV working two jobs and still in the guard, right? No breaks, no handouts, you know, bootstrapped it the whole way, working really, really hard the whole time. And of course, sacrificing a lot of family time and 80 hour work weeks, 90 hour work weeks, all that good stuff. And not crying, it's hard work, right? But I want to talk a little bit about what we've accomplished and where we're at. What amazes me right now is we were watching a documentary on some of the oldest manufacturing recorded. So there's a there's a manufacturing museum in Connecticut and they harbor a lot of the oldest manufacturing that was introduced. And it all started with the making of firearms in the late 1800s. Right. And what started firearms manufacturing as we know it today going by the historians at the facility, which we would like to go and visit, maybe do a little YouTube video on, because I think it's so worthwhile, was um, rifle manufacturing started with a government contract trying to get rifles with interchangeable parts because most rifles were made custom one-off, a lot of times forged barrels by the gunsmiths themselves, locks, stocks, barrels, but... Not a lot of it interchangeable. So if a, if a rifle went down, which is the same problem we have today, it might take six months or a year for somebody to fix it, right? So think about where the military was at back then. The very first rifle manufacturer won a contract, and I think it was for like $2.50 a gun or something like that. But the only way they won it is they had to set up a manufacturing process that made the rifles uniform. And that way some parts could be stolen off of one to keep another in order or replacement parts could be used. That was the birth of modern rifle manufacturing. And that was in the late 1800s, nearly 150 years ago. Fast forward to today, we have self-driving cars, self-landing airplanes. We have rovers that have landed on Mars. We have people in space all the time. And yet... In modern manufacturing, at least on the rifle, and we sort of left it go. And, you know, you you have switch barrels, but if you were to say, okay, you have a switch barrel for, let's just say, a Ruger rifle, 
it might fit on yours, but there's a good chance it's not going to fit on a lot of other ones, right? There's going to be plus or minus and effects. In today's modern manufacturing, we still don't have 100% compatible, all the parts working and playing together, and all the parts being completely interchangeable. Think about a custom gunsmith barrel or chambered barrel. What are the odds of that being taken off and put on any rifle and head spacing and shooting properly? And this is, you know, 2023. And so what I, what I was driving to work today and what I was so fascinated with is that after watching that video, it, it dawned on me. It's like we were still solving that problem that they had 150 years ago. And like when we were down visiting with the FBI at Redstone, one of the things with, with our conversations there was that they have just a hodgepodge of rifles. And if any of them go down, it just takes forever to get them back up and running again. The parts aren't interchangeable. You can't take parts off one rifle and put it on the other and put it back in service. This is 150 years later. And I was like, oh, my God. You know, as much as I didn't know that that's where rifle manufacturing started, here we are. This is the problem that we were solving here right now. So... For me, it was like with all the people that have been involved in this project, one of the most fascinating things is is with this ACE system that we developed, we have finally solved a 150-year-old problem that has plagued the industry. You can take for the last more than five years, let's say seven years, right? Any ACE we've ever made will fit on any barrel we've ever made with the same caliber perfectly. Any barrel we made can be fit to any ace we've made from what we have setting new on the shelf now to what we have in circulation from five years ago. Those parts are 100% interchangeable. And the same thing with the receivers. Any ace we make today, any ace rifle that we've made six years ago, any chamber that we've made, it will headspace perfectly on any receiver, whether it was made 10 years ago or tomorrow. It never dawned on me that this is, I mean, I knew what we were trying to do is we were trying to make the perfect rifle, but we were trying to find a way to make it in a system to where we could manufacture it without human involvement. So in other words, like our goal with our business was always to not depend on the skill or the craft of a single person that we could develop a system to rinse and repeat the same exact product every single time and have them 100% interchangeable and have them to work on anything we've ever built. That's what we were doing and driving to work in the last week has just been in my head. It's like, oh my God, that that like, We've solved this problem. It was 150 years later, but we've solved this problem, and that's what we've done. We've taken an industry that has always sort of had their own head spacing, their own – even from generation to generation of Remingtons, you, you're not going to fit a barrel to any Remington ever made and have it head spaced. And same thing with you know the prefits that are offered. They don't always work. You'll still get guys that make prefits, and yes, sometimes they do and sometimes they don't, but – they have a plus or minus in their specs that you might get a prefit and it not work with your receiver, right? And and so here we are, we're still with this problem. But, you know, the whole time I was thinking that we were solving an accuracy problem. Like that's – I'm an accuracy-driven guy, right? I, I love really accurate rifles. But we were fixing a manufacturing problem and and we finished it, which to me is just blows my mind that we are now ready – to grow into a manufacturing role. And, you know, to be quite honest with you, I'm belated. You know, I have a, a smile in my soul. And on the other end of it, you're actually scared to death, you know, this new big push and step that you're making because, you know, all these things are scary. You know, you're, you're growing as a business. But I find it amazing that, you know, as much as, as we were approaching it, and how we were approaching it and the problems we were trying to solve in the end, it was the same problem that's been around since, you know, the dawn of manufacturing of rifles. And the birth of rifle manufacturing came from trying to get parts that would work together. The first contract ever issued for rifles was to manufacture rifles that had some interchangeability of parts 
that they could keep them in service. And here we are 150 years later with what we feel is, has finally solved the problem, that, that you could take a rifle out of service with minimal skill set, pull parts from a shelf, change the parts that need it, and that rifle will shoot exactly the way it was when it was brand new with no human custom one-off. That's the ACE system. So I want to say thanks to everybody out there that's, that's helped us and supported us and believed in us and, and the early adopters that took a chance of buying one of our rifles and saying, this is a pretty neat system, you know, i got to give this a try. That's what brought us to where we're at now, and I'll never forget that. The building that we're in right now, we're planning on leasing for two more years. And just to tell you a quick backstory on our new facility, we were planning on staying here for two more years. Bat Machine does a lot of our manufacturing in Idaho, and we do all of our teaching and assembly here. And a week before Christmas, when we were supposed to renew our lease for two more years, we were pulled into a meeting along with 38 other businesses and said, hey, by April 30th, you all need to be leaving. A bank had purchased all of our properties the properties that we're, they were renting from and are making it their corporate offices. And so here we are a week before Christmas. We were planning on staying. We were working on extending our lease at the time. And all of a sudden we're like, oh my God, we have to move our business. It's a week before Christmas. And I want to share with you this story because it's about, you know, having some faith as well. You know, sometimes I think, you know, God has a way of saying, look, You've been complacent long enough, and now you've been doing well, and you're working hard, but yeah, you're going to stretch right now, and we're going to make it happen. And, you know, at that point, I was driving home, um, you know, after that meeting, and I was actually worried that I was going to have a heart attack, you know, that, like, I could just feel my chest, like, just pounding, like, the worry, like, oh, my God, you know, it's a week before Christmas, and we've got 90 days or 120 days to move our entire business, find a new building, get it up to snuff and I could just feel that pressure and then I thought you know what um let's go you know let's let's get the boots on and hit the ground running and we started before Christmas we worked day in day out we looked at so many buildings and we found a manufacturing building a mile from my home that has 80 900 square feet and I walk I seen the video and I was like wow, that's really interesting. You know, like I'm looking at it, I'm like, we've never found a building that fit all of our needs properly, you know, from having students come in in the classrooms because we're not just manufacturing, right? And as soon as I walked through it, I was like, oh my God, this is the building that we've always, you know, dreamed of. This is, this is our main, you know, I'm walking around the next corner. I'm like, oh my God, there's a spray booth. You know, like I was walking around the next corner. Oh my God, there's a classroom. And then I walked around the next corner. Oh my God, there's like rooms for students to stay here. Like beautiful. You know, like, you know, there's there's two sets of rooms. There's a lower floor that's beautiful. Looks as nice as any hotel you ever get into. I think they were the corporate offices, but and then upstairs has an older portion that might have been the original offices for the building. We're gonna fix those up and and have like seven, eight rooms, really nice rooms for customers to stay at, a nice foyer, to a nice hangout area to watch TV in the evenings. How does that happen? How does how does the perfect building, you know, fall into your lap and and land there? I, I just don't know. You know, like it has to be faith, you know. It, you know, we looked at so many buildings and we were driving around in ice and snowstorms, my wife and I and, you know, Richard and we're just nothing's fitting and it's like we're getting down to the wire and we're asking the bank, you know, hey, that purchased our building here, can you give us till July? You know, and they're like, Well, we'd rather not and you know, we, they have their plans, and don't get me wrong, they were gracious in working with us, but it just all fell into place. Now, it didn't happen in December. You know, this was two or three weeks into January now, and now we're getting within 90 days of, of us being told we have to leave, and it just, it all fell in place. And the whole time, you know, in the back of your mind, you're thinking something's going to go wrong. And there were obstacles to overcome, of course, you know, there, as there always is, right? Even at the last minute, Someone had done some damage to the building, removing a piece of equipment that shouldn't have been removed. But it all worked out in the end. And at one thirty yesterday, we signed for our dream building, something that 10 years ago I wouldn't have ever dreamed possible. And even now we were thinking that 
we were still two years out from making that move, which was what we were planning on trying to do. But intervention stepped in and said, no, you're going to do it now. And then the machines came along. And, you know, the whole time we're looking for machines because we want to put them in the building. And the people that we met along the way, like Dan from Doosan and Bill from Akuma, you know, just narrowed down to two machines, which I think both were just world class. And Akuma did a, a deal with us that just totally blew us away. Like, I mean, this, the machines should have been out of our budget. And a little bit of faith and, and hard work, and all of a sudden it's like, yeah, we can do that. And it's like, oh, you're kidding me, you know? And so for those out there in small business, and I'm sure a lot of you, you know, get it, that, you know, there's a lot of responsibilities on your shoulders, and there's a million ways to trip and fall down and fail. It, it happens. And sadly, it happens to too many small businesses. I always say that those that have small businesses, it's like it's a marathon of – punishment and pain and you have to be willing to get up every morning and put your boots on and the boxing gloves on and go to work because it is not a game for the weak hearted it is really hard mentally and physically to to go and i think a, the main reason a lot of businesses fail is that should have succeeded is they just get tired you know they they get worn out they they can't get in and do the fight anymore you know they've They've done everything they can do and they've sacrificed, you know, a lot. I know, you know, a lot of people like to villainize businesses and, you know, the ones that make it. But for the ones that make it, the fact that they made it, it just boggles my mind sometimes because they're one of the few and they had to have taken a beating to get there. You know, it's just just not that easy. And I wanted to share my story. You know, it's always been I always felt like there was interventions in my life where I, I shouldn't have made it. You know, like there's times where you know, there's been intervention that it couldn't happen any other way. I remember just to share with you a, a really personal story. When um, I was younger, I worked really hard, right? I, I had no silver spoon in my mouth. My first car was $300, right? But in my early 20s, I worked really hard, multiple jobs. I had a really nice speedboat at a local lake here. It was a Donzi for those that know who what Donzies are. It was a, not big. It was a 22, but still, it was a really fun boat. I had a Mustang GT. I had um, a motorcycle, four-wheeler. I had my own house. Now, I, I bought all these things. I didn't, you know, I, I worked really hard. I, I'm not bragging, saying that these are just things that I enjoyed, and I was young, and, you know, I, I had that chance. And I remember sitting on the dock, and this, this story is going somewhere. This last story I'll share with you. I remember sitting on the dock, this true story. And, you know, I had my boat a, a slip at Racetown Lake. And um, I was sitting there, and I was like, you know, I, you know, I dated. And, you know, you all go through that stuff, right? And I thought, you know, I just never met the right girl. And I thought, you know, I would give all of this up if I could just meet the right girl, right? Just the one you just fall in love with, right? The very next day, my wife stepped on my boat. True story. And I remember watching her. She was invited by I didn't know any of this. She was invited by my, my sister at the time. But I remember it was a Labor Day weekend. And um, I remember seeing my sister. We had a little picnic and I invited the family to come down and took them out boating and skiing. And, and my sister's walking beside this, you know, Come on, guys, I was in my 20s, right? This really hot chick. I was like, oh, my God, you know, who is that? And I was like, who's that person walking beside my sister, right? And at first, I thought they were just randomly two people walking in the same direction. And then I was like, oh, my God, she's with my sister. <laughs> and that was it. I was, she stepped on my boat. I helped her get on, and I just fell head over heels, and we've been happily married ever since. Um, I proposed to her on the dock that we met, and there was a lot of hard times, you know, like, growing as a business and and I did give it all up to grow as a family and to do the things and provide for my family you know um my wife says she wished she would have met me when I had all the really cool toys and as we grew we replaced them you know like me and my wife used to ride lots of motorcycle um we put lots of miles on and we replaced these things but you know as a young family you know we were back to renting a small apartment and when our daughter was born you know, working so much overtime, my wife reminded me that I had a family at home that needed some attention. <laughs> so, so it was always sacrifice. But, the, but the reason I'm sharing with you is, um, 
I you know just want to give thanks to not just the customers and all the families and friends that have helped us through the years, but even just to God and say, what a blessing. And I never want to forget really where it all comes from. And I never want to take it for granted. I always try to do the right thing. You know, honesty, integrity are, are things that are important to me for this reason is I think karma does come back and get you if you treat people wrong and you don't do the right things. And, you know, I always like to, to say that I would like to, this to be handled how I would like to be treated, you know, and, and doing that. So this is a personal podcast to me, a day after closing on a building that I never dreamed would we would close on and putting machines in that I would never dream of putting in and within the next three months be manufacturing and start going down that road of growing in to being a manufacturer. It's a dream come true. And I didn't get there alone. And I always want to say thank you and be grateful for that as well. So for those of you with a small business out there and, you know, putting your boots on at five in the morning and getting home exhausted and falling asleep with your boots on at nine o'clock at night while you're trying to eat dinner, hang in there, have faith, keep plugging along. You know, it, it will get better. It's a long marathon. It's not a race. And there's a lot of miles to go. And um, it's not for the, for the lighthearted. But for those that can just keep trying, there is that next door you're going to go through that you're going to be like, I don't, I don't think I can work any harder. And then you go through the next door and you're like, oh my God, you know, I'm working harder. I don't think I can take on any more responsibilities. The next door you go through, you're taking on a world different responsibilities. And I think these opportunities stretch you and make you grow and mold you into that person that you're eventually going to be as a business owner. And it's what forms you to take on those roles and prepares you for those roles as well. And so it's, you got to go through it. There's no shortcut to the top, at least for most of us. And I think in the end, you wind up being a better business owner, a better boss, a better employee of the company. Your visions are clear on how you make products, how you hold them to their standards and how you interact with your customers. And I think that that makes a world of difference. So just want to say, you know, a big thank you to everybody out there and share with you that we'll post up some videos soon and try to give you uh, some sneak peeks as things are going in. Hopefully we'll some really exciting videos here shortly of some machines being delivered. And But it's all because of you guys. And for me, the fact that not knowing the issues that we were trying to solve and the, the things that we were trying to make and create, like the ACE system and the barrel system, is a 150-year-old problem. I always thought it was just maybe thinking outside the box and trying to come up with a better way to make a rifle repeatedly more accurate. And and the, when I watched that documentary, I was like, oh, my God, they're saying the same things that we're saying now. And, like, the, the whole thing that we're doing was the birth of rifle manufacturing and the problems that we're solving and trying to get past it created the very industry that we're in. And so for me, it was like at some point you feel like, wow, how does this work? That here I am now, 150 years later, in this business, solving these problems and, and never really look back that far to see how much part of the system I was and where we were at in changing and molding it, just like it's molding us. So pretty cool. Before I continue on, I do want to say just a really quick thanks to Krieger Barrels. Krieger is the maker of fine cut rifle barrels are out of Wisconsin. They have a new program called KriegerDirect.com where you can log on and order your barrels in as little as two to three business days. And in today's market, that's awesome, right? So if you want a custom barrel and you want the best, stop over to KriegerDirect.com. That's KriegerDirect.com. We'd also like to say thank you to all those who are participating in our online long-range shooting school. So new videos will start up next week. And our online long-range shooting school is in our, our entire long-range shooting school that we are posting in an online format for customers to enjoy from their home. So those that can't travel in to join us, they will eventually have the entire archive of our online long-range shooting school that they can go back and attend. I think right now we have 11 hours of instructional video posted. Uh, you can learn more about the online long-range shooting school at wolfprecision.net. And you can register right there on the website through Patreon and then come back to the page on Wolf Precision and all the highlighted blue or instructional videos. If they're highlighted blue, they are active and you can watch and enjoy them. So we really appreciate it. We also like to thank everybody who signed up on Patreon to support the podcast as well. That really means a lot. So for we call it the Wolf Pack. Those that uh, would like to support the podcast, you can stop over to Patreon. It's $3 a month. And we really appreciate it. 
the new building that we're putting in, um, we are going to have basically, we're going to call it a bunkhouse, but really six or seven really nice rooms for customers to come in and when they're attending any of our classes here from our long range shooting school and we have our reloading classes going, we're going to have customers coming in and building rifles and eventually some gunsmithing classes. Eventually we're going to be holding those. We put them on, on hold until we got into the new facility and got a plan on what we're doing here. But the nice part about it is you'll be able to come and stay at our facility and enjoy our facility. No worries about trying to find a hotel, traveling back and forth. You can stay right there with us. A couple of really nice places to eat right around the corner. Really nice place to stay, and we'd love to have you. So we're going to be hosting people and basically calling it the bunkhouse. But you can get a room with us and stay with us right there at our facility while you're attending classes. That will start in August. And so those signing up for our August classes and on, uh, we will be teaching them out of the new facility in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. And you have the option to stay with us if you'd like. We'd love to have you. Some other updates and news. We are going into rifle ammunition manufacturing. We will be working on that when we get into the new facility. And one of the reasons being is, One of the bigger issues with rifles is just finding ammunition, first of all. And then not only that, but, you know, there's factory ammunition that's actually still really expensive right now. And then just finding it consistently has been a problem. So we share the loading data with customers of our rifles. We know the loads for them. I mean, they're so consistent because all the parts are interchangeable. The loads work and the rifles right across the board. So any 223 we've ever built in the last, I don't know, 10 years – I can tell you the load to shoot out of it, and you'll shoot it, and you might modify it a grain or two, um, but as long as your your practices are good, you should make world-class ammunition. It's one of the beauties of having a, a good system in place. And so for this year, starting this fall, 22 Creed and 6.5 Creed are going to be the first two that we're going to offer. And then the beauty of it is, is we're going to offer it as remanufactured ammunition as well. So our goal is as the customers are shooting it, they don't just throw the brass away and have to go out and buy it brand new again is – they can send the brass back to us, and we're going to remanufacture it, saving them a lot of money and giving the, that once-fired brass that they just sent us back as loaded ammunition. So we think that's going to be a great service to offer. And just for some of the wildcat calibers, like the twenty two Creed, if they decide to go that route, at least they have a good resource for good ammunition, and we can provide them that service. That would be great. So we're looking forward to that as well. And, of course, you can always come in and learn to reload with us. Our reloading classes have always been a lot of fun, and – Just really helping guys and girls get up to speed on what it takes to make great ammunition. And it's not as equipment heavy as you think, and it's just good technique. So we've been doing really well with that, and we really appreciate all the customers signing up for that as well. So I won't try to keep this podcast too long. I wanted to share with you my story. I just felt called to – I just felt like a – you know, driving into work today, I just wanted to share with you, you know, just how blessed and grateful and show – you know, just appreciate all the gifts in life that have been given to me. And, you know, just when you think it's going to go really bad and and you're in that dark spot, you're like, oh, my God, we feel like the walls are going to start crashing down at any minute. You just have faith and you just keep working forward. And I don't know how many times this has happened in my life. <laughs> I should know better by now, not to panic. But, you know, it's that's that's what it is. And I just felt that, you know, I wanted to share it with you. And our experience just since December, a week before Christmas of getting just horrific news and, you know, be like, oh my God, you know, like all this work that we've done and now what do we do? And just have faith and put your boots on and get to work and, and use your works out in the end better, you know, stretching like us, we're moving into a new facility now, two years ahead of schedule in a building that we didn't even dream existed that would fit our needs just so perfectly. And everything just fell into place. It was just uh, unbelievable. And say that, we are super blessed that it happened. And to everybody out there that helped make it happen, thank you so much. We really appreciate it from all those involved in the background that it was a lot of work. So thank you. All right. So the next week we'll get back into our regular schedule. We're going to got one more on the Fundamentals of Marksmanship series. If you have any questions you'd like us to answer on the podcast, please send them in. And we'll cover them in the next podcast that we release next Thursday. So thank you, everybody, so much for joining us here at the podcast. We really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the podcast and you'd like to leave a comment, it always helps a lot. If, if you know somebody that's in the long-range shooting and you want to share it, we really appreciate that as well. It helps us a lot with our standings. So thank you, everyone, for joining us here. We really appreciate it. My name is Jamie Dotson. I'm your host, and you're listening to the Long Range Shooting and Custom Rifle Building Podcast. <laughs>